When I was 14 years old, at that time I was living in the beautiful island of Puerto Rico. And my father, who used to travel for business, brought home several issues of Teen Magazine from the USA. <laughs> I was immediately hooked. The images on these magazines portrayed perfectly manicured, cute as flowers, mostly blonde, Barbie-thin girls with very smooth skin. Their hair, their hair shined like the sun and it looked like silk. To me, that was perfection. It was at that same time that my body was awkwardly developing. And some of the very well-intentioned women in my family reminded me often that if I didn't start dieting, 14, the hormones were going to make me fat. They would even point at other more developed girls in the neighborhood, and they would whisper to me, look at them, you don't want to end up like them. It was the perfect training ground for me to learn how to craft totally unrealistic goals for my body. It was all about looking like those girls in Teen Magazine. So, I stood like this, because I was kind of tall. <laughs> I shaved my arms. I poured bottles of pure chamomile and squeezed lemon in my brown hair to make it blonde until it started falling out. <laughs> then, no way, then I decided to buy skinny clothes, small clothes that never fit me. <laughs> so I said, okay, then I buy bigger clothes in an effort to appear as if I had lost some weight. There was absolutely no mention of IQ, personality, Skill set, none of that mattered. And it was at that moment that I really started hating my body. I hated my nose, my hair, my arms, my legs, my feet, my face. I am going to share a story. I'm going to tell you a story. And this story is going to put things into perspective. In 1863, William Banting, a gentleman from England, wrote a book that became so popular that by its third edition, it has sold 63,000 copies. If you take into consideration the value of money and inflation, this guy would be a millionaire today. And you would think, well, this book must be about curing cancer or maybe creating safer vaccines. Nah, none of that. This book was about something that today, today, 153 years later, we are still deeply impacted by our body. The book is called Letters on Corpulence. <laughs> Letters on Corpulence. And if you are unfamiliar with the word corpulence, it really means the state of being fat or fatness. So imagine. A book called Letters on Fatness made this guy rich and famous and thin. The obsession with the size of our body started hundreds of years ago, way before those vibrating belts, way before those horrible plastic jogging suits, way before Jack LaLanne and Jane Fonda entertained us on TV with their revolutionary recommendations. And um, the, book, the book was called, the first, the William Mantim's book was called the first diet book ever published. Ever published. This guy didn't even exercise much. <laughs> he drank hard liquor with every meal, every night, every night. He ended up losing 50 pounds. So he eliminated a handful of foods of his diet. He eliminated bread and butter, sugar and milk. He also eliminated beer. He lost 50 pounds, and he was finally able to tie his shoes and fit in the public bath bathrooms of that era that were really tiny. And that, my friends, forged the relationship between feeling deprived and happiness for good, just like Teen Magazine did for me. 
The term banting became synonymous with dieting in England back in the day. Even today in Switzerland, people from Switzerland, they still refer us to being on a diet as to bant. So imagine you're in a restaurant and the waiter comes, Madame, would you like some dessert? Oh, no, thank you, I am banting. <laughs> the diet wasn't cheap, and for that reason, it was directed to men. Men in business, men who wanted or needed to be in control of their bodies. And so, you see, back then, uh, achieving a slim body through dieting or banting meant, on one hand, having exquisite pieces of meat, while on the other hand, controlling your desires. Which somehow implied that higher education and a sense of moral fitness, in other words, a sense of superiority, and self-control were qualities that only those with more money could buy. Crazy, right? <laughs> and, wait, and women were not thought of having the same safe self-control as men. And we were pissed. Yeah. Look at her. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to be part of this diet bandwagon at any cost. So the battle for moral fitness began. And at the end of the 1800s, women were finally given permission to have the same self-control as men. And this was the beginning of our obsession with this four-letter word, thin. When we are obsessed with the size of our bodies, other things come into consideration. We all have an emotional before and after. In our memory, before and after. Before when we were free, when we had absolutely no consciousness around looks. And after, when we voluntarily put ourselves in prison. Voluntarily. I used to pray. I used to pray, and um, here's my before prayer. My before prayer is, dear God, please make me a boy so I don't have to wear pink dresses and I can roll in the ground and get dirty. Yes. And here's my after prayer. Dear God, you better make me lose 10 pounds <laughs> and make this hair kind of like straight and maybe blonde. And while you're at it, just give me a stomach virus so I lose another five pounds. Amen. <laughs> You know, as well as I do, that as children, we don't care about how we look. It is just not in our universe. So why are we taught this? When are we taught this? And why do we learn this? And when do we learn it? Hmm. Listen, your body, the human body is a number of biological systems that create essential functions that are necessary for everyday living. Your body moves oxygen and blood and nutrients and hormones around. It also has a heart. Your body can breathe, reproduce, have orgasms, speak on stages. What your body can do is short of a miracle. Actually, let's be real here. Your body is not short of a miracle. Your body is a miracle. Without this body, we wouldn't be able to raise children, or love, or run, dance, have sex, or come to this event. Yet we are ashamed of our body. I was ashamed of my body. I was, taught, I was told and taught, actually, not to like myself early on. And let me tell you, it was not only the media and the teen magazine. It was also the nuns and the priests in the schools I attended for 13 years. And it's, I love my nuns and priests. Well, not, not all of them, some of them. <laughs> Some of them. But the point, is, the point is that I do remember specifically having to confess feeling my body, my physical body, aroused by my first boyfriend. 
So I had to confess that, and I was in third year of high school. What is that, 16, 17 years old? And I was told that feeling that way was a sin. And I was taught to make myself unworthy so that God will see me as worthy, so I'd be seen as worthy by God. And I believed that. I did. Man, I never, never went to confession after that. <laughs> we as adults and leaders, we have great influence in our children. What we say in front of them affects them forever. The way we relate and refer to our body becomes a tattoo in their mind. Imagine how different children's life would be. Actually, let's just all imagine here right now, me included. Imagine how different our life could be if we were raised by these words. I love you. I trust you. I admire you. You're smart. You're strong. You can do whatever you want when you grow up. You're safe here. Hmm. But instead, we're taught to hide. We're taught to put on a mask. I was taught to put on a mask. And for that reason, I did not even know what being authentic really was. I had no idea. To me, that was fake. Now I know that to be authentic for me, it means to speak my truth, my truth, without the need to be right or skinny for that matter. <laughs> so what is stopping us? Let me tell you, let me tell you what's stopping us. It is not equating body image with happiness. It's not that, get rid of that idea. Can we go back for a second? Can we go back to when we were children the happiness that we felt as a child who has yet to learn body loading. Can we go back there? Yes, I say yes, you can. If you look at it differently, take your car, for example. The same as your body, your car is the vehicle that takes you places. We take care of our car. We change the oil when it's time, most of us, but <laughs> but the point is that we look for opportunities to increase its value, that's for sure. Yet we do not take the same level of care when our body needs something. We feed it crap, usually not at the right time, as you could hear. We um, let it rust. We do not admire the miracle that we are. When you look in the mirror, full length mirror, naked, naked, no cheating here, where does your attention go? It goes to every little imperfection in your body. Usually judgment and loathing follows. Now that I am in my 50s, I am finally, finally able to bless my legs by the way, allowed me to finish a half marathon just two days ago. I'm still sore. <laughs> but I see my cellulite and I say, hello. <laughs> I also see my sagging breasts that fed babies for years. And I smile. And wait, yeah, and of course I wear the miracle bra. Why not? <laughs> But you see, the, the point is that the difference is that now I come from a place of love, gratitude, and acceptance. And I call that freedom. Whatever size and shape your body is, it is. Who cares? Can you improve? Can I improve? Absolutely. Your value the value of your soul is not related in any way to a random number on the scale. We need these vehicles to get around. So when we decide 
to attach our worth to measurements and percentages and numbers, something deep within us is dysregulated. And there's pain, and that sucks. It is an insult to Mother Nature not to treat these miracles with the utmost respect. Your bodies, your miracles, these bodies, your bodies, you in the audience share these beautiful pictures with me without even knowing me. And here you are. Today can be different. Let's make today different. Today does not have to be about eating that pie a la mode. It doesn't have to be about that. Let's make today the day we feel like that pile of mode. Sexy, warm, <laughs> yummy, delicious. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>